Okay, you know the drill. Last time we had made this type of video, it was with the Montreal Canadiens, and if you checked that out, you would know exactly how this video is going to work. The Hockey News had their Future Watch 2023 edition of their magazine a few weeks ago, and within it, they had themselves lists of top prospects for every single NHL team. They had a big list of the top... I believe it's 100 prospects overall, and then they had themselves the 32 individual prospects list ranking all the top 10 prospects of every NHL team. What I wanted to do here was go over to the Vancouver Canucks and talk about their prospect pool, go over where they are in the NHL, give you the top five guys, and I mean, we could go over the top 10, but I don't really want to focus on six to 10. I wanted to just talk about number one to five. And the reason I'm doing this video now is because the Vancouver Canucks have themselves a pretty good pick in the 2023 NHL entry draft, which is going to take place literally in a few days. This guy they take at 11th is probably going to become the new number one. I mean, there's a chance it's not, depending on who they take, but the Vancouver Canucks prospect pool is not what it once was. If you go over to the magazine, you'll find that the Canucks prospect pool is ranked 28th in the NHL. They're given a ranking of a C. If you take a look at the chart, you can see that back in 2019, the Canucks prospect pool was third in the NHL. Then it dropped to fourth, then it dropped to 14th, and now it's down there in 28th overall. Back in 2019, they had Pod Colson, they had Hoaglander, Quinn Hughes had finished up his draft plus one year in the NCAA, he was a phenomenal prospect, and you still had other guys like Cole Lind and Jet Wu, Thatcher Demko, I think, still counted as a prospect back then, so... Vancouver's glory days of being at the top of the prospect lists are no longer, and if you take a look at the guys in their top 10, I'll give you the spoiler right here. Their top 10 includes Philip Johansson at 10, Artur Silovs at 9, Ada McDonough at 8, Will Lockwood at 7, and Danila Klimovich at 6. And then if we go over to the top 5, this is where this video will begin. The fifth best prospect in the Vancouver Connect system is Jack Rathbone. 23-year-old left-handed defender, 5'10", 177 pounds, who had himself a pretty impressive resume at the NHL level. He had 14 points in 37 AHL games, which was a huge drop-off from the point-per-game mark he had last year. He also had two points in 11 NHL games, so you could see an interesting and unfortunate decline in overall production. Either way, though, this is what the write-up says. The fleet-footed puck mover learned in January that lightning can strike twice. In successive AHL seasons, he has been hospitalized after huge hits. Despite some injury slowdowns, his resolve to become an NHL mainstay remains strong, and his 40 points in 39 AHL games last season helped him make the all-rookie AHL team. Johnson praised Rathbone's resilience. He's doing a lot that can impact us and the big team. It's his buy-in and willingness to learn. He's hungry to keep getting better defensively. The Future Watch magazine says that he was the best Canucks prospect last year, and they're also predicting him to make his full-time NHL debut in 23-24, which I feel is about right. Definitely. Fourth overall is also a player that the Hockey News are saying is going to be a full-time Canuck in 23-24, Linus Carlson. This was the guy they got in the Jonathan Dolan trade the second one at least, and he's been slowly creeping his way up the depth chart after coming over to the AHL from Sweden this year. He had 49 points in 72 games played with the Abbotsford Canucks, which is a pretty good profile, to be honest. He's 23 years old, right wing, 6'1", 178. This is what the write-up says. He may be on the fast track. Linus Carlson, sensational 21-22 with Skeleftia, his 26 goals, broke Elias Patterson's SHL rookie record, led to 46 points and top rookie honors. After a strong NHL camp, he quickly found his feet in the AHL. An extremely smart and competitive player, Johnson said. He kills penalties, plays on the power play, and is on the last minute of the game, whether we're up or down a goal. His wall play is strong, he has a heavy stick, and he manages the puck well. This really is one of those guys that I didn't really expect to be as good in the AHL as he has been. Obviously, we talked about him breaking all the Patterson stuff last year, but just seeing it in Abbotsford was a very good sign, and I'm not going to say it guarantees NHL-level success right away, but it's a really good sign to have for a guy that definitely has an interesting path. He was acquired for Dolan, who was acquired for Burroughs, so it was a really big deal back then, and we're still feeling the ripples today. The third best NHL prospect is yet another player that the Hockey Watch guys, or not the Hockey Watch, excuse me, the Hockey News guys in their future Watch magazine, excuse me, are saying is going to be a full-time Canuck this year. It's Niels Oman. He's 23 years old, a center, 6'2", 179, and 
I'm gonna be honest, dude, I was really impressed out of him on this previous season. He already played 68 games, and I think he's just gonna get the whole season next year, no reason for him to go down. He had 16 points in that sample and was just really good, very solid as a reliable, defensively-minded center who had some really brilliant flashes of offense once in a while. He meshed well with Dakota Joshua, he had mixed well with Jack Stadnika, he mixed well with all the other bottom six guys the team had. He was initially a Colorado prospect who eventually was sent over to Vancouver. I mean, he was a free agent for a while because he just didn't want to play with the Avalanche. And so, because he got an opportunity here with the Canucks, I think we're going to see the best out of Oman next season. He's 23 years old, so definitely there still is time for him to grow. But the write-up says this on the magazine. When Colorado didn't sign its 2026 run pick, the Canucks responded with a two-year contract offer. The SHL export made the opening night roster and logged 35 games in a defensive role before an assignment to Abbotsford. Ryan Johnson said the Canucks Canucks love the player and his attitude, and they're looking to see him play around 16 to 18 minutes a night in the AHL while getting comfortable taking on more offensive looks. Oman was recalled again after the All-Star game. It says here, he's going to be a full-time guy in 23-24. Not surprising, he is a great player, and we will see more out of him. But the second best prospect here in the hockey news is none other than the Canucks' first round pick from last year, Yonatan Lekaramaki. Now, Lekaramaki, we've talked about quite a bit over the past few months here. 18 years old, right handed guy who really found his game in the postseason for Jure Gardens this previous year. He had nine points in 29 All Svenskin games in the regular season, but really increased that production as he was a point per game in the playoffs. He really started to come alive, and we wanted to see that because this was a guy who, after having the SHL season, than he did last year, we sort of needed to see that upwards progression, and we didn't see that until the end of this season. Next year, he'll be in Arebro doing his thing in the top Swedish league, so we'll see how he does there. The Karamaki has battled injuries and illness, the Hockey News writes, and a foot injury in February, ending a disappointing season at 29 games and just 9 points. At his best, the right shot prospect combines speed and soft hands with a shot that packs velocity and accuracy, but he needs to work on winning puck battles and gaining weight. The focus is to play with the puck in the offensive zone, adding puck protection, and also be able to use his attributes even better as a smaller player, Ryan Johnson said. The Hockey News is projecting Le Karamaki to making the team in 26-27, so that's a long time from now. My goodness. He's gonna be, what is it, he's 18 right now, so that's, he's gonna be 22 years old? Okay. Honestly, I'm not terribly opposed to that, especially if he's going to be a really good player once he does make the Canucks. If he could be the best replacement, oh yeah, sign me up for that. And without further ado, we have ourselves the number one Vancouver Canucks prospect. As written about here in the Hockey News Magazine, it's none other than Bo Horvat trade return Atu Ratu. 20 years old, 6'2", 190 pounds as a center. This is what Ratu was able to accomplish this previous season. He had himself a pretty good amount of numbers. I mean... 15 points, 27 games played in the AHL with Bridgeport, and 12 points in 25 AHL games with Abbotsford. He definitely didn't produce as well as Linus Carlson did, for example, but after the ups and downs, the weird years that he had had where he was drafted a lot later, he rebounded into Liga, and now he's here in North America, Atiratu is a guy who was ranked to go first overall in 2021 for a reason, and all we gotta do is just hope that those attributes bring themselves out over the course of the next calendar year. Ratu had a precipitous fall down draft boards ahead of the 2021 draft, but he's impressed in his North American debut season, even seeing 12 games for the Islanders. Acquired in the Bo Horvat trade, the Big Finn is learning the pro game in the AHL after putting up 40 points in 41 games with Jukarit last season. We want him to develop and not limit what his impact could be, said Johnson. We don't need him to race into this. He is a first-year guy. Last year, the Future Watch guys ranked Ratu as the first Islanders prospect, so now he is the first Canucks prospect. They also say he's going to make his NHL full-time debut in 2023-2024, so it's interesting because, I mean, out of all these guys, the top five prospects for the Canucks, four of the five are ranked as being guys that will play next year. Ratu, Oman, Carlson, and Rathbone. Talk about retooling, rebuilding on the fly. If that actually happens, then the Vancouver Canucks are going to be a pretty young team next season. And honestly, I'm kind of all here for it. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about the top five Vancouver Canucks prospects as ranked by the Hockey News? Again, the guy taken at 11th overall will probably become number one, but we'll see what happens when the draft comes and goes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Charles 99. And bye.